view on the end user uh, and steps for the end user to optimize their motor system. Um, for the end user, we have the following system improvements. Uh, an end user has to focus on the different elements of the motor system, meaning the motor, the VFD, or the load control, transmission, the application itself, and last but not least, system integration, integrating those components into an efficient system. Um, this is another way of showing that. We have here the, the motor system, as shown before, and for each component we have different measures, starting with a motor, uh, apl uh, applicating uh, a more efficient version, a more efficient uh, um, motor, I3 or I4 is the first step. Then, for the control, uh, making sure that uh, you use, for instance, the control uh, meeting the demands or, or VFD. Um, the mechanical equipment, make sure when, there's, uh, when you have a pump system or fan system that uh, there's no thr throttle in place uh, and that the transmission is efficient, efficient components. For the pump, for the application, make sure you use the best available technology. Last but not least, this is in fact the starting point for your uh, optimization analysis is what exactly is the demand, energy demand? Uh, what is the, the flow rate which is necessary to meet the process demands? With this um, optimization steps, you will get to the best solution. Uh, and one important thing to notice, motor replacement alone is not the issue. Then you only will reach small savings. An example for load control. With load control, here we um, uh, see a graph and starting at 100% flow, 100% input power uh, at this point. Uh, when you want to lower the flow rate 50 to 50%, at this point, you using a throttle, you end up here at 80% of your input power. Instead of using a throttle, using a VFD, you will follow this line, the system uh, uh, characteristic and you end up here. 50% uh, flow and 20% input power. So you save 60% of energy by applicating a VFD instead of a throttle. That's the main thing. So for uh, systems, pump systems, fan systems, applicating a VFD is very worthwhile when you want to uh, adjust the demand. We have steps for the analysis of a motor system. In the audit itself, you have a five-steps approach, um, making, first of all, an inventory of your motors, drawing the motor list, the main characteristics of the, of the, of the motor systems, for instance, the rated power, the hours per year, the load factor of the, the, the motor system, or the control, the way the, the system is controlled, age efficiency of the motor itself, etc. Those are characteristics you need to, in, to inventorize in order to make a first analysis. In that first, first analysis, you pick out the best options, the best, uh, the motor system with, with the highest potential. Uh, for instance, large motors with large running hours uh, with a low load factor or a high edge, for instance. Um, then, Step three is measurements. With those systems, you can do, you need to do measurements or to really check what is the real load, what is the real situation for that motor system. And then step four, from the business case, calculating the real cost efficiency of the proposed uh, improvements and finding the implementation itself. This is a one time exercise, but you need to do it reg on a regularly basis. And for that, you need an energy management system in place. Uh, needing management commitment for uh, energy efficiency activities. And by that, you also involve uh, departments like procurement, design, maintenance, and suppliers. Um, having an energy management system in place, uh, we have the plan, do, check, act cycle, which, which leads to repeated optimizing circle of activities. So 
in the long term, you will reach the best solutions for motor systems. Um, I will show you now some slides of uh, Swiss research about uh, a large stock analysis of motor systems, uh, leading to uh, three items, so to say. We're looking at age of motor systems, where we see that many motor systems are very old, uh, sizing, load factor of motor systems, and the control of motor systems. And um, to start with age, why is it important to look at all the motor systems? Well, I will show you that, that by with this uh, graph. I've, we've showed this before this afternoon, morning, evening. But um, what I'd like to show here is, for instance, example of 45 kilowatt motor. What you see here is that um, currently an IE4 motor has an efficiency of 95.4%. Um, and uh, But having a place an older motor, for instance an IE1 or the old European classification F3, F4, um, this efficiency is much lower. And for instance, an, uh, an F3 motor, which dates back to 1990, uh, compared to a currently an I3 motor, uh, makes that um, we have um, an F3 and I3, we have a 4.2% difference in efficiency. So replacing a 25-year-old motor gives you easy uh, extra efficiency. That's one side, one part of the story. Secondly, uh, a 25-year-old motor needs have had uh, has had some maintenance, maybe some revision, some rewinding, and with that rewinding revision, efficiency normally drops again some some points of of efficiency. It's a total uh, difference between an old motor and a new efficient motor is larger than uh, shown here. That's the main message here. This is an example of this Swiss research. This is research, research <coughs> between of, of uh, 4,142 motors. Um, and the age of those motors is plotted in this uh, graph. And what you see here is that um, the operated life expectancy, 10 to, to 20 years, depending on the, uh, the motor size, um, many motors are far older than the operated life expectancy. In fact, more than half of the motors are older, twice as old as you should expect, looking at their life, operating life expectancy. So this means that there's a lot of savings to be uh, gained by implementing or by putting into place more efficient modern motors. Then, looking into the way those motors are controlled. Again, we look at those um, 4,142 motors, and what we see here is that um, only 20% do have a frequency uh, uh, control, or a frequency control, and um, that uh, most of them, or uh, let's say uh, more than 50, or about 50% is smaller than 5 kilowatts. The other 50% is larger than um, 5 kilowatt. The average size of these 4,000 motors, with, uh, of, these, of the motors of these VFDs, is, is 21 kilowatts. So 20% has a, has a VFD. It doesn't mean that 100% should have a VFD, but maybe there's a potential for up to 30 to 40% of those motors which, which could benefit from a VFD. Then we have the load factor as a they here, they, this, this graph is a result of actual measurements of those motors. Uh, in total, 104 motors are measured. And there we see that 68% have an average load factor below 60%. So more than two-thirds of the motors have a load factor below 60%, meaning that they probably are oversized. Okay, I have to go on, looking at the time. The last section of this webinar will be on some successful programs, some tools, and also some further information. I show you uh, some slides on this Swiss Easy program. It's an 
uh, incentive program on motor systems consisting of four consecutive steps and for each step there is a subsidy in place um, financial incentive for these four analysis steps and targeting at removing barriers with end users in order to get them really so far at the point that they implement efficient motor systems the subsidy adds up at least to the cost of the uh, uh, analysis in doing the uh, uh, I must say the subsidy adds up to the cost for the analysis itself this uh, are the four steps this, uh, tools to really um, execute those steps um, first in the right upper corner we see this is for the quick the quick scan if what is the potential within the specific company for motor systems um, secondly there's a tool for the motor list itself it's called intelligent motor list uh, and with that you can uh, put in the characteristics of the motor and get a first impression of the potential and thirdly the really big opportunities they uh, can be measured and there there is this tool for this standard test report and finally you get to the point that you need to draw the business case and there you can for instance use this motor systems tool it's uh, also a, it's a product from from emsa and we have a separate webinar on this motor systems too later on next week and we'll show you later on the results of this program easy are shown here um, and we see the blue bars show the payback time running from less than one year up to 11 years and the big thing here I would like to mention is that when you make packages of those separate motor systems implementations then you get an average payback of 2.4 years um, you see so uh, that, that's the main thing also it's very um, attractive to make packages of motor systems when implementing those in a company in order to really uh, benefit from all the possibilities for uh, efficient motor systems another example uh, for programs on motor systems is uh, a Dutch um, program called Green Deal. It's also an audit program, but it's also targeting awareness, making uh, activities, doing activities on raising awareness within end users on the possibilities for motor systems. <clears throat> Here, we have had motivated members of the supply chain, meaning manufacturers, but also installers, who together with the end users performed these audits. Uh, in total 35 business cases were drawn leading to these results an example of four different projects uh, you see quite differences between the projects in terms of savings way um, from six percent up to 40 percent and good to mention here is the starting point for these projects were a demand for maintenance or replacement of the motor Two of them had also a trigger for energy efficiency. Uh, and the main thing here is that having these nice results, uh, uh, economically viable savings, uh, the companies also say, well, yes, we will follow up this project by implementing motor management or implementing this separate project uh, of technology for all production lines or for all other motor systems. So this is very encouraging results um, but also showing that it takes time to get a company that far that all motor systems are really addressed and finally I show you some available tools I've already shown you the, uh, um, the website where you can find more information also the website from easy easy the program easy in Switzerland top motors the policy guidelines the publications and the other webinars for the coming period the first one is next uh, next week Sandy Nielsen the developer of the motor systems tool will do a webinar we also have a webinar on motor policy toolkit uh, going further in detail into the policy guidelines publication and we have three separate webinars one on compressors 
one on pump systems and one on fan systems. And then one final slide on an event next year I would like to mention is the Motor Summit 2016, which will take place in Zurich, Switzerland. We will have uh, two days, uh, 11 and 12 October, totally devoted to policy programs and technology developments on efficient motor systems. Coming to my conclusions for this webinar, quickly, we have, first, we saw a very huge amount of electricity goes into motor systems globally. We can save up to 20 to 30 percent of this energy uh, used by motor systems. We also see that the rolling stock is very old, too old, you can say. Typically, payback period is three up to max five years. And we see that the big savings can only be harvested with system improvements, not by motor improvements, system improvements. That's a key, key word. Applying load control is an important item. And we see also that motors are a commodity. They're traded globally. And for that, um, um, making it more transparent and more competitive, we need uh, harmonized standards. And for and making having harmonized standards in place, then we can make a step towards minimum energy performance standards. So final conclusion, there's still much more to be saved by using the best available technology in matched systems. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm open for questions. <laughs>